Back in eight polishing. I don't know why I've done the whole bike polished. <laughs> I bloody hate it now. Anyway, anyway, look at that. Back from the uh, the welding guy. He's, uh, well, that's pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, that new top piece is the bit he's welded over the top of the uh, of the bodge that he did. He put the cap on the wrong side, if you remember rightly. There's the sight level on that side. And that is the overflow tube. So I've just put a little hole through there, running from the cap there. And there's the, I haven't polished the back, so you're not gonna see that, but there's the outlet for the, uh, for the bottom. So I think that is actually ready to mount now. I've put some mounting holes in it, where I think it's gonna be. Um, we'll see in a minute, but uh, there we are. So how to make your own aluminium reservoir bottle. That's cost me, well, it cost me a bit extra because he charged me a tenner to fix the, the top plate, but that owes me, I'd say, about 30 quid. It's not bad for a you know, custom aluminium reservoir when you'll pay sort of £100 plus for one if you go somewhere like Pro Alloy or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it on now. Let's see what it's like. There we are, mounted in place. There we are. Pretty cool, not bad, not bad. Now for the big test, uh, does the swinging arm still fit on? There's the little sight reservoir from that side. I haven't, I've just realized I haven't checked if it's watertight yet. Hmm, I might just put a little bit of water in in a minute and we'll see what happens. See if it's back to drawing board. <laughs> Okay, there we are, swinging arms on, does fit, it fits, Yee-hoo. you can't really see it <laughs> after all that, it's not really very visible, but uh, it's a neat little solution to the reservoir bottle anyway. So all I have to buy now is the uh, little air equipped fitting to go onto there, which will come out, little red and blue fitting, come out here, and then that'll be the takeoff up to the rad and that's just the drain off so that will feed down under the fairings um, only one thing is the is the cap is really close to there and it actually touches the arm a bit so it squeaks a bit as the arm goes up and down but uh, I can trim a little, trim that down a tad is probably the best bet so yeah so there we are so I think that's finally the end of the story for the reservoir but I, st I haven't uh, water tested it yet. So that's the last last little job. <laughs> Shouldn't really be the last job, should it, really? Check if it's watertight. But uh, let's hope it is. I'm going to be quite annoyed. It's time to think about exhausts and, uh, and what exhaust I want on there, what's going to look best on there, what I can afford. So, uh, so yeah, my buddy's coming over, Jim, this morning, and he's got a race fit... Uh, black edition on his blade so he's very kindly offered to to whip that off his bike and uh, he's bringing it over i'm going to offer it up and see uh see where it mounts obviously it's got to try and i'm gonna have to get something welded onto the uh oh, rr4 headers there very kindly mr green has arrived with his uh lcr race fit uh black edition we've got to put it back on wheels just so we can have a look at what's what um, that's where it sits at the moment. As you can see, that does look rather tasty. Uh, it does require some pretty, pretty sort of major mods to the headers, though. Sort of cutting them, cutting them where they join, and making a, a custom sort of link piece, really, to match up with the uh, with the race fit. But that's a nice system. And even the uh, bracket is not a million miles away um, as to where it needs to mount perhaps an inch lower with that bracket and it will just raise the whole thing up slightly but uh, that does look spot on so that's certainly a, a top contenders for the exhaust for the bike very nice um thermal paste turned up today I ordered this uh, a couple of days ago from ebay now this is the this is the stuff or thermal grease is called actually this is the stuff they use on um, computer cpus with the heat sinks to, to help their heat transfer and it's the ideal thing to use on the bottom of my rectifier not my rectum my rectifier where it mounts to the subframe because 
this is going to be in an enclosed area out of any through draft so to speak I'm going to use some of this thermal paste between the bonding it not fixing it but just so it'll be between the the aluminium and the actual sink there we go rectifier now bolted in uh, with its thermal paste um, while on the subject of exhausts um, as you know, I had, had uh, my buddy Jim over with his race fit system this morning, trying it on. Um, but I've actually got a quite a good deal offered on a an Austin Racing exhaust on uh, on this one. Um, very tasty. I decided to sod the budget and uh, and go for this one. One of the main reasons being is the uh, is the twin um, you know inlets at the bottom. I can use the I can probably do more with this by getting those mated on sort of here somewhere on this system and then uh, I'll go and see the people Arctic Engineering who made who did the frame supports for me they're actually a metal spinners and they can probably make up some uh, sleeves which will mount to the uh, to those those out those inputs sorry on the uh, on that system so you know a little uh, a little reducer shall we say going up to the size of the other system made out of stainless welded onto here and the idea being i can just push on the uh, the uh, the austin system without having to cut it or hack it about too much but uh, but yeah so that's that's the exhaust that's what's going to be on there so it should look rather tasty with that on there and it's not going to be too loud because those systems are actually baffled within that link pipe as well so they're fully uh, Pretty fine to use on track days and whatnot because I think with all the baffles in it comes down to under 100 dB so uh, no problem there at all so have a look rather nice